Bachelor Nation, I have to say that for the first time this season, I am absolutely shocked by the rose ceremony. I was not expecting that. I know a lot of you out there weren't expecting that. Many people had picked Ben as the winner this season. I had him in the final two, and there he goes. He's not even going to fantasy suites. I am absolutely, I, I just, when it happened in that moment, you know, really, at the end of his hometowns, when he had his one-on-one -on -one time with Tasha, and you could visibly see Ben freeze, that was when I started to get that seed of doubt, thinking, oh no, Ben is done. Ben's going home. Ben's over. And then we start the rose ceremony. Ivan gets the first rose, and I was like, oh no, Ben's done. Ben's gone. Uh, you know, I was thinking Ivan, Ivan was the one getting sent home tonight, but no, Ben. And I, I have to imagine, like, if tonight was the first time Tasha saw uh, everything that happened on the hometown and Ben afterwards in on when he was leaving, that it has to stir up some feelings for her. Like, I don't know who she picks in the end, but if she was basing her decision with Ben on, you know, him not, basically not saying I love you when he was in love with her. Oh, that is, it's just brutal. Just brutal. You know, I was planning on going through all our four dates one by one, but with that absolutely shocking ending for tonight's episode, uh, yeah, we had to start with Ben, and I just feel, I really feel terrible for him. Uh, you know, we see him on his on his hometown with his sister and uh, his friend Antonia, and like he has that realization, that moment, he's like, holy crap, I'm in love with her. And Antonia's sitting there like, yeah, you d and you just say it. Just say, I love you, that's it, don't worry about it. And then when he gets that moment, and he can't do it. He can't say the words. He freezes up. Even heading into the rose ceremony, he tells Chris Harrison that he's in love with Tasha. Doesn't get an opportunity to say it. Even like when Tasha was walking him out, I just wish that he would have said, I just wish he would have said something. Turned the car around, gone back and said something. Just said that, like just tell her. Just like Bennett coming back and saying like, hey, had to let you know that I loved you. You know, that's your, that's your shot. That's your chance. If that's how you feel, don't, don't throw it away because you're, you're too nervous or too scared about saying those three words. Uh, oh, it's, it's, uh, it was a difficult ending to the episode. I think, I w I think most of us watching were 100% confident that Ben was going at least to Fantasy Suites, and here he is, fourth place. Um, before I finish talking about Ben, I would like to say that I would love to see him as the Bachelor, you know, out of all of these uh, final four guys. Uh, he is the one that I feel most attached to. I feel like we got deeper into his story, into his, his life, uh, and it just seemed like just a great person. So if anybody out there is thinking about casting the net next bachelor, like maybe even just cancel Matt James, let's have Ben Smith, the new bachelor. All right, let's go back to the start of the episode and we'll walk through our three b potential bachelors or our three potential contestants who, uh, are all going to fantasy suites. So first up, we had Brendan. My my thought first thought at the end of Brendan's uh, hometown was he definitely moved up the ranks. He seemed like I don't know. There was there was that brief scene when it was first when his niece came and after after Tasha stole that hug, 
You know that her, that Brendan's niece wasn't running to give Tasha a hug. She was running straight for Brendan, and Tasha she swooped in, intercepted. She stole that hug. Tasha the hug thief. After that, when you know they got to do the carnival games, they were they were doing the secret handshakes. They were having their dance party. That was like the most personality that we've got out of Brendan all season long. You know, he really seemed like he was in his element today with his family. His family seems extremely important to him. And uh, I think that is something that's also extremely important to Tasha. Uh, and just everything went went perfect. You know, uh, all really all four of these these hometown dates went well, but I think Brendan's went the best out of everybody's. Like it just seemed like it was perfect. Um, so yeah, let's move over to Zach. Zach, he's started this new workout program. It's called the New York City Cab Workout, where you go on a date with somebody and then have to carry around a wooden cab the entire date. Like that thing didn't look light and flimsy like it's all made out of wood and Zach and Tasha are there hoisting the thing around all day long and already like all episode on anytime someone's outside they're just dripping in sweat add into add on to that carrying around a wooden cab and poor Zach like you could see sweat like dripping off his earlobes he's definitely shedding the pounds while he's out there carrying that cab around with Tasha. Um, at the end of their, their date portion of the hometowns, you could see Zach was, was full on lusting for Taisha when they were having that fountain makeout. And I don't think we've really seen that from him before. And it was, it was just something where I was like, whoa, that, that is a man he, who really, really, really wants to be with Taisha. Now onto the family portion of the night. I will just say this first. I thought his brother was kind of an idiot. You know, every every time we have hometowns, you have some somebody who's going to ask a ridiculous question. And it just happened to be Zach's brother this time around, you know, asking, hey, how does your feelings with Zach compare with all the other guys? And then Tasha kind of gives her answer. And we're all sitting there watching like we know, like, Oh, Tasha can't say, oh yeah, I'm definitely picking Zach at the end. You know, that's, she's not allowed to say that. And of course, he's got to give the, answer, the reply back, well, you didn't answer my question. But thankfully, we moved on from there. And Zach's mom and dad seemed uh, so happy to see Zach happy. They seemed just very genuine and just ecstatic to be there to share that moment with their son and Tasha, and I really enjoyed seeing that. Moving on to Ivan, how about the foreshadowing? You know, all day long, oh, wish my brother, wish my brother, wish my brother, it would be so nice of my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother. And then finally we have that moment when Ivan's brother walks in, like we all knew it was coming, and Ivan doesn't even notice. He doesn't even notice, and we have to, so you have to see Tasha like reach over, grab, and turn his head. Uh, it was kind of amusing, and, and it kind of seemed like Ivan had that that moment where like, what the hell is she doing? Until he sees his brother and just how filled with joy he was to get to see him. That was probably the highlight of that date, you know. But they did have this super cute little video with Ivan's niece. Um, but that time with his brother, both with uh, J with Tasha and Gabe, as well as Ivan and Gabe, just seemed very special and was to me the absolute highlight of the date. You know, uh, they seem extremely close. Um, and another another little thing that stood out to me was Tasha's, or pardon me, Ivan's dad was having a conversation with Tasha, and really just like his point, he was trying to say was. Hey, I got married too young, I got divorced, and second time around, I knew with all my heart that I was ready and this was the person. And I just want you to be to be that same way. And I don't I don't know what I think Tasha misread what he was trying to say there. Uh came off a little awkward, uh, but overall 
you know, just another solid hometown with a very nice family and of honestly, just a relief to see. Like we really, besides one little question from uh, Zach's brother, that was probably the best set of hometowns we've had in a recent memory on The Bachelor or Bachelorette. And honestly, this is probably the best Final Four that we've had on any season in recent memory. You know, I think every group has had some wild card or some ridiculousness like Victoria F was part of the Final Four. Jed, everybody remembers and loves Jed. Uh, even everything with Colton at the end of his season, totally ridiculous. And for this season with Taisha and these four guys that she has at the end, uh, I wish that we got more of this because this feels real. This doesn't feel like a circus. This doesn't feel like a show. This is like, looks, feels like we're actually watching someone fall in love. And I very much appreciate that because the last few seasons of The Bachelor haven't really felt that way. So uh, thank you to The Bachelor uh, production team for bringing in Tasha because she not only saved the season, but has given us one of the best seasons in recent memory. And it's just uh, so refreshing to see. And for me, has revitalized the franchise immensely. And one of the big key differences, all of our contestants are just a little bit older. And how much life that gives back into the franchise for me is incredible. So hope that we see this trend continue moving forward in the future. I don't think that's the case for Matt James's season. I think we're going back to the same usual or usual bachelor junk, but moving beyond that, I hope that the bachelor learns a lesson from Tasha's season and just how amazing it was. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap things up for tonight. We will be back again on Monday night for fantasy suites and then again on Tuesday to wrap this season up. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you later.